with our second group of people, and it's nice, it's nice and small. Um, we have a few handouts. If you did not get them, just let us know or come on up. It doesn't matter if you just come up and grab them. Um, there is a stapled page that has three pages on it. Um, this is just from one BFA program about do's and don'ts. Um, it was the one that was the most spelled out. Um, so I chose it just because I thought it talked a lot more about um, things to avoid or things to do that the other schools didn't. So I just, it wasn't for any particular reason, but for that I thought the there was a lot of information in it. Um, we also have uh, from the U University of Michigan Musical Theater Department questions to ask and evaluating musical theater programs. So it's like a look at that first before you start looking at the other schools and what's available. And then Tony um, has this here and she'll be able to explain that a little bit more um, about uh, when you choose your schools how to kind of figure out, mapping it out, what you're going to do. And um, uh, Tony will go ahead and introduce, we'll just introduce ourselves. And uh, I, my name is Wendy Tabiska, and I actually teach here. Most of you in this room, I know, or I know your kids. Um, but uh, we also have a private, you know, we teach privately as well. Um, and we uh, have been involved in this this kind of college thing and learning about the college thing and prepping kids for several years now um, because our kids went through it and did it. And it was very interesting process. And at the time, you feel like a deer in headlights. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like what it feels like. And it can be very overwhelming. I will tell you that if you get past this, you can do anything. <laughs> OK? Really, it's not the easiest thing to do. But it is doable. It's all doable. Um, and uh, I'm going to pass it over to uh, we'll go to Jackson, and we'll go to Tony. Okay. Uh, my name is Jackson Tabiska. Um, I graduated from the Orange County High School of the Arts in 2003 from the Music and Theater Conservatory. I decided that I wanted to do, I wanted to pursue only acting. Um, I do still sing, but while I was applying to colleges, I was only strictly looking at acting programs. Um, I applied to about 14, 15 schools, and Tony will talk a little bit more about that sort of number and how that's a good idea. Um, and of uh, the schools that I applied to, the ones that I was accepted to, I settled on Carnegie Mellon University, and I went there in 2003, from 2003 to 2007. Um, in between my time at OSHA and Carnegie Mellon, I did a lot of scholarship competitions. There's a lot of acting, performing scholarship competitions where you can start earning some money towards college. Some of them it's just a little bit of money, and some of them it's a lot of money, so they're all over the place. You can ask me some questions, or Wendy or Tony, about those as well. Um, the only one worth mentioning in my bio is that uh, through a series of scholarship competitions, including National Foundation for Advancement in the Arts, which is also known as Young Arts, um, that led me to being nominated as a Presidential Scholar in the Arts and then being selected as a Presidential Scholar in the Arts. There are usually only two actors selected nationwide to that honor, so I was fortunate to be one of those in 2003, so it meant I went to Washington, D.C. and performed for the President. Got a, medal with his name and my name on it, and the First Lady, and toured the White House, and just a lot of cool, really cool stuff that got me ready for a really selective college program. So uh, my time at Carnegie was absolutely amazing, one of the most amazing things artistically I have ever done in my life, if not the most amazing thing I've ever done artistically in my life, uh, so far. Um, and uh, it really uh, made me the artist, and I would say person, that I am today in, in a big way. So nowadays, in addition to acting, I also, as Wendy said, coach. I write and direct for youth theater. I don't have my master's, so I can't teach at the collegiate level, but I love, love, love teaching and directing and writing for uh, high school and under. Um, and yes, one-on-one -on -one coaching master classes. I actually did teach at OSHA for a very brief period of time before realizing that I really like the small, small groups. So uh, Wendy is wonderful with larger groups, so she is perfect for classroom atmospheres. I like sort of master class one-on-one -on -one type of thing. So that's what I do nowadays, and it's, it's really the, because I mean, this is part of the college conversation. If anyone has questions later, once Tony's gone through her information, part of the conversation is, well, how do you live as an actor after college? Um, and I can tell you this, that it's, it's the combination of all the little jobs that I have in addition to the acting that helps me to make a living. There's, just always keep in mind, it's the Tom Cruises, the, you know, the people that you see on, uh, on screen and on TV, that's 1%. 
and all the millions of the rest of us are we're grinding it out, right? So understand that that's statistically what you're looking at, and if you catch a big break, wonderful, but you shouldn't choose this career path planning to be famous. That's not a good idea. So um, all of my little artistic jobs combined with my acting sort of make my living, and I'm glad that I don't have to wait tables and do other things. Um, so that's... And you're a resident and artist. And I, that's right. I always forget that, because it's relatively a new thing. I've only been with them for a year or so now. Um, but I'm a resident artist. That means basically that I'm a company member with a theater company called the Chance Theater. In Anaheim Hills, I work closely with them. I do work at other theaters as well, but that's sort of my artistic home. I love the work that they do there. I'm very involved in uh, their productions as well as their fundraising efforts. We're moving into a brand new space, which is double the size of the theater that we're in right now, which is very exciting. Um, and uh, yeah, so if anyone has any questions about those kinds of things, I can answer those as well. Uh, but I'll pass it off to Tony. Oh, okay, thank you. Hi, um, my name is Tony Solo, and I am a private college counselor. I work only with kids who apply to uh, performing and visual arts programs. Wendy and I go back Ooh, a long, a long ways. time. Very beginnings of OSHA. The very beginnings of OSHA. And as she said a few years ago, after I got my two kids in college, actually after I got the first one in, and I realized there was nobody to help me, uh, we kind of were chatting one day in the parking lot, and we decided, hey, we can help. We both love kids. We can help kids get into college. And I do the boring college application part of it, and Wendy and Jackson do the audition prep, the working with monologues and helping you pick the right material and singing the right songs. I'm also uh, an alumni, or an, uh, my children are alumni. I have two girls who graduated from uh, music and theater here. They were here seventh through twelfth grade, and um, my younger daughter is currently a senior at um, NYU at Tisch School of the Arts. We're not really sure what she's going to do. Um, she went in thinking she, and let this be a lesson parents, she went in thinking she was going to do one thing and over the course of four years that's kind of gone like this. So we're not sure where she's going. Um, my older daughter also graduated from Tisch in their musical theater department and she graduated in 2012 and it only took her a year and she is now, I'm proud to say, working actress. She's currently on tour in a very obscure little show called The Hungry Hunger Games, which is a parody of The Hunger Games. So there is life after college. You can make a living. She's paying her own rent. We're very happy. <laughs> so that being said, how do we get all of you into college? How is this going to work for you? They are going to talk about what you do when you get in the audition room, what you have to do once you get in there. I'm going to talk to you about making sure you get into the room. And it's, think of it as this giant puzzle. There's a lot of pieces and you've got to get them all on the table in the right spot. The first step is to figure out your list. Where am I going to go to school? What do I want to do? Is everybody in here the parent of a sophomore or a junior? Do we have any senior parents in here? Oh. <laughs> you guys know where you're going? <laughs> okay, well, all right. Then you're not going to like what I'm going to say. But the time to start is junior year. Start formulating a list, a big list. Okay, these are highly competitive programs that you are looking at. If you're looking at BFA conservatory programs, they take very small numbers. Uh, we're talking about Carnegie takes, what, 10, 12? They take about 10 musical theater majors and anywhere from 15 to 18 actors. Rarely do they go to 20 actors. Yeah, and that's pretty standard. You will have a school like NYU will take maybe 400 kids, but they're going to spread them out into eight different programs, eight different studios. So you may go in thinking you're getting a new, you want to do musical theater and they're going to put you in an acting program. So the, what you need to do, the first step really, is to develop a, a big list. 
And don't develop your list by whatever the word is on the street today. You know, whatever they're talking about on 10th Street. Oh my God, the best school is Pace. Everybody's going to Pace. Or, Everybody's going to Florida, or everybody's going to Carnegie, or ever, you know, whatever. You as an individual or your kids need to do some really intense research. All of these programs are similar and different. They each offer something unique that makes them the program that they are. It's super, super important that you find the program that's right for you as a student or your student finds the program that's right for them. Right now the idea of spending my whole day every day doing theater is like, oh my god, I can't believe how exciting that's going to be. Well yeah, today it seems really exciting. Look at the classes you're going to be taking and what's expected of you at each of these schools. You may find that really what you want is a BA program where you're not going to be doing theater 100% of the time, where you're going to have a little more academics than if you're in a BFA program. A BFA program is really a, a pre-professional, getting you ready to work program. So the first big question in your junior year is what type of program do I want? Start developing a big list. Start looking online reading what the curriculum is, reading, you know, do they offer a showcase? Um, you know, UCI, in your senior year, they take you to New York for a month. They're, every school has something different. Now, you know, UCI, nobody wants to go there because it's in Irvine. But it's a really good program. Look at it. it. It really is worth looking at, especially if you're thinking about Chapman. If you're willing to go to Chapman, why wouldn't you be willing to look at UCI? Uh, UCI? I don't understand. But anyway, so you the first step is developing a big list. End of junior year, you've got your list. You start to narrow it down. You narrow it down by all the factors that we talked about, about what kind of environment you want, does the program offer what you want, um, where is it. The, the list that came from the University of Michigan, this really goes to the heart of the matter. It, it's about is this program right for you? Does it offer the things that you want in a college program? So after you've developed your list, I highly recommend that over the summer before school starts, you really start getting on top of things. And by that I mean narrow the list, read over all the application requirements, not just the common app part of it, but if you're doing a BFA, you're going to have a double application process. You're going to have supplements, you're going to have additional essays, you're going to have resumes, you're going to, some schools want a headshot, some schools you know, get away with a snapshot. But every school on your list is going to be unique in some way. The other thing you're going to want to do is look at where do they audition? Do you have to travel to that school to audition? Do they go to the Unifieds? And do you guys know what the Unifieds are? Everybody? Okay, good. Um, big important question. Does that school have a pre-screen? Because so many kids apply to these programs now, a lot of schools have added a pre-screen. So they're weeding out the kids who just really, you know, either are doing it on a whim or just, you know, I think I want to do musical theater or they're, they're just, they're looking to weed out the people who just would not necessarily be right for their programs. They just have so many kids that apply now that they've had to do this. Um, so look at is there a pre-screen? The other thing you need to look at is your deadline dates. When are the applications due? A lot of times, um, most times now, you cannot request an audition until you have sent in your college application. It used to be you could call up, you could say, I'm going to apply, and you can get an audition date. Not anymore. Now, they want to make sure you're serious. You really want to come to this school. You need to go and jump through all the hoops. And that means you've got to have your essays done. 
you've got to have everything done. You submit your application, and then they will assign. They will invite you to audition. Okay. The reason it's important to get this done early, for a, no a number of reasons. You you have students who are in shows senior year. They want to perform. There's only so many hours in a day. You can only do so much. Your kids can only do so much. The more you can get done before school starts and the homework and the routine, and you guys are here till five o'clock every day, the less stress you're gonna have, the better off you're gonna be. You're not gonna be frantic and you're not gonna be missing dates. If you can, over the summer, at least have an idea of what you're looking at time-wise. You can create a master plan and plot things out. Know that, okay, my kid wants to go to these three schools that have pre-screens, and the dates that those are due are November 1st. Okay, then these five schools, I have, she has to have that application in before they'll even give her an audition date. So I've got to prioritize, make sure that those are the applications that get in in a timely manner. Why you want the other reason why you want to get everything in early is that auditions fill up quickly. There's only so many people they can see at the Unifieds. There's only so many people they can see in LA. You may, if you wait and you don't get an audition date in LA, you may have to travel. You may have to go to a city that's not as popular as LA where you can still get a date. So you may be flying to San Francisco, you may be flying to Las Vegas. God forbid you may be flying to Chicago, but <laughs> you, you want to give your kid the best opportunity so and the less amount of stress, least amount of stress. So you want to get those applications in early and get your auditions squared away early. Also, you have schools who maybe uh, don't come out at all and you have to go to them. Michigan, you have to either go to Michigan or you have to go to Chicago to audition. So you have to factor in. Wagner, you can only audition in New York City. So you have to factor in travel. You don't want to overbook. You don't want to have an audition in California on Friday and have to be in New York on Saturday. There's a lot of juggling and a lot of getting all your little ducks in a row. It, like Wendy said, it, it can be done. The key is to start early and to be super, super organized. Um, oh, I'm forgetting certain things. That's, ba oh, I was gonna explain this, <laughs> okay? This is an example. This is a, a student I work with. This is her list of schools. She's kind of all over the place. She has a mix of BFA, musical theater programs, some random, BA and a couple of BFA acting programs. The dates on the left side are the application due dates. That's when the, the university or the school application is due. But on the right <coughs> is the things that are unique to that particular school. The program, where the auditions are held, most of them are unifieds. Um, what you have to do for that particular audition, acting, voice, dance, whether or not there's a pre-screen. Um, if there's a particular, for instance, Elon, they only have 520 audition spots. That's it. When those are filled, they're gone. So you can today request an audition at Elon before you file your application. But if you don't know that, and you, you look at, oh, you know, their application isn't due until January, and you put that at the bottom of the list, guess what? Yeah, you got your application in, but you didn't get an audition date. So it's really super important that the, when you start this process, you read everything carefully, and you just create a big old, however, Whatever works for you. If you're super visual, you know, get one of those big calendar things you put on the wall and you just, or a big whiteboard, and you just plot it all out and keep track of all the, keeping track of the dates, the deadlines, 
and the requirements are really the key to the whole process. And and honestly, it can be done, and you'll you will keep your sanity that way. And then you're going to need, each school is going to be different in terms of what they want for their audition. For their pre-screen, they're going to be different. For their audition, the live audition, they're going to be different. So you need to know what you're up against there. They don't all want the same types of monologues. They don't all want the same types of songs. They're pretty close, but some of them may have a little, you know, somebody might want something a little weird. So. Reading is just like so, you know, so important. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, if you have kids who are really, you can trust them to do the work, that's great. But as a parent, if you want to sleep at night, I would just, I would, I would go over it. I would just make sure, because we all, we're human, we all miss things. You might miss something that your student picks up on. So if you have two sets of eyes on the process, I think, you know, you're going to be fine. And that's it. I'll let you talk about oh, what, uh, yeah, <laughs> what you got to do in the room. Well, it's, I think it's just a good time for questions. Do you, yeah, because what is it that you need, or what is it your, what do you questions, because that will help us. I have yes. just one quick question. How many auditions can you actually do in a day at a unified? Um, I think I, I think we were there for two days. We were there for two and a half days. So we, you know, we had a hotel room, we spent the night there, and I probably had, I mean, I don't know how many you can do in a day. I, right, I think like, I did maybe five in a day. Yeah, I think four might have been the average, but remember, he was at acting programs, right, not musical right. theater yeah, programs. Right. 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 But yeah, um, Michigan wants a whole day. Yeah, this yes, is interesting about do. CMU because on their new on the new thing on the website today, I just checked it. Uh, they're not doing uh, dance audition. Yeah. Right. It's only acting and singing. Right. The dance audition, they're not basing dance for their their this next year's class. They will have them dance after they've been accepted, and they will figure out what levels they're at. Yeah. But it's not. It was a shock to me to read that today. See, it's funny because NYU used to be there was no dance audition. They would level you when you came in, and now they've gone the opposite, and now they have a dance audition. So you, you, just, so don't, you just don't know. But the musical theater auditions do take longer. Yeah, don't do. panic. This is the number one thing. Don't panic. All the schools are there. They understand that people are here and here and here and here. If you notice that you're going to be late, you just have to go drop a note, or there is someone who stands. There's somebody at Proctor at the outside of the door, and you can run yourself and say, "Look, my daughter's still stuck, or my son is still over here. Um, is that okay?" And they'll just they'll adjust. So don't panic. So you're sort of doing little bits of school here. They're doing this monologue here, and you're doing this. For, dance for, for music, music and theater. For music and it theater. It can get like that. Yes. You're not just going. Okay, I'm only auditioning for this school. All the yeah, requirements. Yeah, yes. Oh, yeah, you, you are. are. You but are. I think all I at the same time chunk. Or are you you're throughout the day? No, or you're you kind of like forth? you're waiting in a hallway. You're waiting in a hallway, uh -huh. and so, like, well, you know, for Carnegie Mellon, you you some you're gonna go in, you're gonna sing your song, you're gonna do your monologue, and then they might send you into another room to do something else or something, you know. Okay. But there could be a dance call, and that dance call could be quite a while. You could be in that dance call for an hour. Well, and depending on the number of kids there, they will split you in groups. So they'll say, okay. group A, you, you dance now. Group B, you come and they'll you sit in the hall and they call you in one at okay. a time. So you stay at that one school. You stay yeah. at that yeah. one school. As many hours as they as need you. Until really? you are okay. completely done. it wasn't done. always like that. I mean, when, back when I did it, people were, Jumping. you know, going they had to the jump. For because, exactly. Going back because because it was like, well, I've got an hour before they're going to see me for singing, right. so I need to go do my monologue for this school, and then I need to do my dance call for it, so maybe they don't do that. And anymore. that could happen. That could happen. Because of the numbers now, yeah, it's gotten they way more structured. One yeah. okay. um, one of the things to make note about that as well is there are schools that allow you to yeah. do a drop-in, meaning that they have a piece of paper on their door and say, if you don't have an appointment but you would like us to see you, please put your name on the list at this time. You, there have been kids who have gotten into schools that they hadn't even sent in an application to. They find out that they're interested in them and would like them, and then they fill out the app and they send it in. So the cart kind of goes before the horse. 
that doesn't always happen, but that is an option. So you want to keep open to that as well. That's usually the smaller schools too, yeah. the least popular schools. Right. They're sort of right. fishing. Yeah, they're but just it's an they're option. Just grabbing yeah. if they can. My advice to you, it's an awesome experience for those of you that aren't already seniors. Go up this year in February. Go up on Saturday and just walk the halls. You get, because this is the thing, I don't know about you, but when you are going to something and you don't know what to expect, you don't want to have to be thinking about those things. You want to just go in and do your audition. Some people, like Jackson, you, know, you can put blinders on and you can just block everything out, but some people are not like that. And so it's good as a junior, you just go in, you act like everybody else, like you think you're, you know, like you're yeah, just and you walk and the out. halls and you watch what's going on. You can actually hear through the doors sometimes of stuff that's bleeding out, but you will feel that electricity and you will see people crammed, sitting in the hallways with earphones in their ears, and I, you know, MP3 players, and they're running their this, and they're doing that, and they're fixing their hair. I mean, it's, it's amazing. But at least you get that part of it out of the way. So when you go the next year, it's like, hey, I know what it's going to be like. And you go in and you do your thing. Right. Um, uh, I think two, that's very helpful. Two things to say to that. In all fairness, I wouldn't have been able to have blinders on if I didn't have this one saying, you're going to go here, you're going to do this. this, this, right. this, this. <laughs> she had it all ready. I all I had there. All I had to do was go, OK, where am I? I'm going this, I'm doing this model. OK, OK, here we go. So if I absolutely would have needed, if, she, if I didn't have that like itinerary of where I needed to be at what time, and I just had to figure it out myself, I would have probably had a nervous breakdown, I'll be perfectly honest. So yeah, I absolutely agree. Go up ahead of time. And, and also because of this, for, 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 for parents, it, most of the time, um, either Wendy masked it from me, how nervous she was, or, or I just didn't notice it because maybe I was just concentrating on my own nerves. But I think there was maybe one audition where, I can't remember, it was so long ago now, but I think there was one audition where like, I was sensing some, some kind of a nervous, you know, sort of freak out sort of thing. I can't remember which one it was, but it really, it did not help me. Like, I was already so nervous myself. So that's a part of it, too, even just for the parents, is go up there so that you're there and you get what's going on and you know what's going on so that you're not going to be contributing to... You're not going to be hyperbolic. Yeah. You're not contributing to your, your uh, child's nerves because they're going to be nervous because um, it's, it's, it's scary. Uh, but uh, that's, yes, I absolutely agree. Take a visit. Yeah. How many schools are usually there? Do you have any idea? Uh, oh my gosh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And this is really important. That's, really that's 26 that are under unified. But schools like Carnegie Mellon are not in unifieds. They, they, they are in that thing. Right, they were, but they're not in so, that's so, our mission for them. So, the, so yeah. they are at unifieds. They're there, but they're not under well, the consortium. Also, like NYU comes they're out, at a different but they're at a different hotel and generally a different weekend. And, yeah. and Carnegie is there on the same weekend, but they aren't always necessarily in the same hotel. They might be next yeah. door or across the street. So um, it just depends. You know, so there are several schools like that. I know that NYU had to be done on the third, like the third day, yeah, it was, and it was like a half day, and we did it on the way home. They were still in LA, but we went to San Francisco. We split it between San Francisco and LA, and we thought he was going to have to do heart in Vegas, but somehow somebody dropped, and they said, "Oh, guess what? We have an opening in San Francisco, oh, in LA," and so it, it worked out. We only had to go to two places. So, um, but boy. Getting the puzzle to fit is nuts. -o. It's crazy. Yeah. Is yeah. there a master list somewhere with Unified like all the schools? Yeah, it's online. Yeah. It, so you it's can good look good at it session. online. Look up unifiedauditions.com. Okay. And they're and they're listed. Just know that there will be some schools that are not on that specific list because they're not part of the consortium. But they're there. They, they go. Outside. Yeah. And I know it's a popular question sometimes. Um, no one asked it in the last group, but we've been doing these lectures for a while, uh, whether through OSHA or other places. And a lot of people always ask, is there some sort of advantage to auditioning at the school itself? No, there is not. 
no need to waste the money. Don't worry about it. Unless it's a school like Michigan that doesn't come to LA. Yeah, well, they, they go don't. To they're Chicago. not coming. They're going to they so need Chicago. that over there, which is a lot easier than going to Michigan. Yeah. yeah. In the winter. Yeah. In February. Yeah. And um, Elon, you have to go to Elon. You have to go to North Carolina. They don't go anywhere. And and guys, so this is another thing. So many people get sick. We didn't talk about this oh, before, but there's a, you know, this is like a one day thing. Yeah. Please tell your kids to stay use, healthy. you know, hand sanitizers or whatever, keep their hands away from their face. Just try to stay as healthy as you can because these auditions are just, they're on these days and that's it. So, yeah. Another reason not to go like to New York this year, the Super Bowl is in New York. Yes. And that's uh, right. that's, somebody just oh my gosh. Yeah. Julia put it on their website yes. that hotel rooms are already booked at more than a thousand. More than a thousand dollars a night, so they're telling people do not come to Julia yeah. for yeah. auditions if you don't live here. Yep. So yeah. here's something I'm concerned about, Jackson. Mm -hmm. Might do any of you. Um, one of these of your schools is Michigan, for instance, and as you know, it's either Michigan or Chicago. Chicago. So because we have to do unified, we, if she gets asked to go to audition, they will probably do it at Chicago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but it may be her very first audition. <gasps> like, <laughs> okay, Chicago comes before LA. Right, yeah. Right. That makes me real nervous. Um, can I, you know, can I make a recommendation? Yeah. Can, can I? Do? <laughs> my Hannah auditioned for Michigan, uh -huh. and we went to Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, it's during the Unifieds. Right. Okay. Go to it is, yeah. So go do another one. Well, it's insane. Mm -hmm. For some it's reason, it's days. it's more insane than yeah. L.A. It, the year she did it, it was all in one hotel. And I, we walked in, and we were booked to stay in that hotel. Mm -hmm. Do not stay in the hotel right. where the audition is. Yeah. It was wall-to-wall -wall kids singing, running. <laughs> just, and Hannah just was like, flipped out and fortunately they had overbooked the hotel they didn't have a room for us we scrambled and went somewhere else which was the best thing yeah, because it was calm. quiet mm -hmm. it was calm she was Maybe away from it that, you know. if you've got to travel then make sure you have a day before her audition so she's acclimated if it, it's February it's gonna be really cold yeah and, uh, the just only to keep her calm the only thing I would add to that, she's a junior right now, or no, she's, she's, a, senior. Oh, she's a senior right now. Okay, then I don't know how much this advice is applicable. You would know better than I would. But um, if you know, if you can get her into any of these scholarship competitions yeah. beforehand, I mean, not only is it good, you know, to, to you know have a chance of making some money for college, but it really just prepared me for the competition. It just prepared me for going into a room and meeting people that I hadn't seen before and auditioned for before. Because we get so used to this. I didn't know how used to the OSHA community I was and how kind of locked into it I was. So I was used to performing with the same people and auditioning for the same people. And it's like you walk in the room and it's, hi, Mr. So-and-so, or hi, Mrs. So-and-so, how are you today? Oh, I'm good, I'm, you know, I'm gonna see you in class later. You know, and then it's a whole different ball game when you're, you know, you're auditioning in front of people that don't know you from Adam. So uh, those scholarship competitions can really sort of start to test the waters of, okay, this is what it's like. Now it's, now it's on the line, now it's time to perform, now it's, uh, untested waters, so if that's if that's possible, well, you know. She's trying to do young art, so. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's she doing spotlight? Well, we're trying if we can get the videos in time and uploaded and. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a pre screen thing just makes things a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. Especially it's when the websites don't always work the way you want to work. That's a problem. That's why you don't want to wait to the last minute. Yeah. Because well, you try to upload some and, and the internet goes down or it's not working properly. Like the comment app, I told you to yes. do, just tell me. Yeah, they're talking about uh, we had, I had problems like that too. I remember, I think it was the comment app. We had horrible problems and I had to call and get help. Yeah, we and if you had waited till the last day um, to do that, you're, you're, you're sunk. No. Well, it's like applying to a UC. Don't wait until the last day to apply because everybody waits to the last day and then the system crashes. You only have a window, a 30 day window to apply to a right. UC. For some reason, every year, you hear about the system crashing because so Everything. many people wait. Don't be, yeah, don't wait. When you yeah. mentioned that um, earlier when the person 
just popped in on an audition and got and then did the application afterwards. Mm -hmm. Was that at the Unified? Like, mm -hmm. no yeah, that yeah. was okay. at the yeah. Unified. <laughs> okay. um, you know, if you've got time, go in. Can't hurt. Uh, it just sometimes it'll be that that fallback school, or sometimes it'll be something they really, really want you and they want to give you a lot of money. And sometimes it's better than just sitting in the hole. Exactly. Right? They, they exactly. Yeah. It keeps your energy, energy up. up. You know, it keeps you moving. It keeps your energy up, and so. Yeah, I, I highly recommend going into those into those rooms. You know, really, really do. The other thing you guys should do is the um, the uh, uh, performing and visual arts fair. Oh yeah, when it's at UCLA, UCLA. It's on coming up very soon. October twenty sixth. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. There's we like went to that too in tons of schools. There. And you got to you know, pick up the information. Yeah. It's just little booths, you know. You talk yeah, to their admissions to people. And October 26th. Get program information. Ask them questions. That's what they're there for. Mm -hmm. And also when the colleges come and visit, like Canadian Yeah. Yes. Yeah. October 20th. I love it. Oh yeah, that's where I went. Oh my gosh, they, I forgot about that. Sort of presentation? They yeah. do presentation. The yeah. one time I went. And it's not just for the drama department, it's for everything. Well, it's for it. everything, but they usually two presenters. Yeah, they usually. The first time I went, there was a guy from MT mm -hmm. and another guy. Um, the second time when we went, though, it was just two, two girls, not from MT. So the first one was more, you know, informative for, for us. But I'm, I'm almost inclined to want to go again because at that point she was still kind of, you know, not wanting to go and ask questions, questions. or anything mm -hmm. yet. Now she's more prepared to go because she's like, I want to go and know about the school. This is a real important game. Um, we had not put Carnegie Mellon on the list for fear that he didn't have the grade point average to be able to go to that school. Because when you hear about Carnegie Mellon, you're going, oh, four point, oh, blah, blah. So, then we went to the college fair. And then we went, I, I <laughs> went to, you know, that one of the things at one of the hotels, and I'm listening, and they're going, oh, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh. And I went up afterwards, and I said, you know, wh what you're talking about doesn't seem to really apply, because my son is going into the acting program, and we're a little concerned about this grade point average. And he goes, oh, well, that doesn't apply to you. That, that's 85% based on the audition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so... There you go. We would have not even gone there. If I had not gotten that information, we would have passed it up. So you need to find out. Sometimes the requirements are different, but I will tell you this. For Carnegie Mellon Musical Theater, all of your classes are within your major. You're in an acting, you have to take one outside of your major per semester. Oh, the electives. You know, the electives. So you gotta make sure that, can you handle those classes that are being offered at that college? You know, you don't wanna have to repeat a class three times. You know what I'm saying? So you have to think about those things. The other people that are going to school there, some some of the classes, I think you took one and it was kinda, of, kind of well, over your head. I mean, the thing is that you're gonna, you know, you're, no matter what school you go to, there are gonna be those elective classes that are like, Psychology really was one of those um, that you thought and, about. But the problem is that they probably don't fit within your schedule because you're running around and you've got a ton of acting classes. So I cheated the system a little <laughs> bit, which doesn't need to be talked about. Um, but before I realized how I could kind of wiggle around it a little bit, um, uh, yeah, there were some classes that I took just because it was the only thing that fit in my schedule, and I was like in classes with geniuses, and I was like, I, I'm an actor, I don't know what. I was um, uh, so uh, yeah, it's that's an absolutely valid point. You know, you got to make sure that you know some schools, Arvine, for example, that's you know 30% outside your major, 70% is in your major, but 30% they're looking for a very well-rounded uh, person. And they want you taking math and science and all these other classes. Not as much as in a BA, but you're still 30% outside your major. Uh, you got to make sure that that's what you want. You know, that you got to you gotta know what what really do I want? What am I looking for? Do I want them? Do I want a minor in musical theater at Carnegie Mellon? You can't minor because your whole four years are already planned out for you. They consider that a double major, the musical theater kids. 
I have a question. I noticed on um, Michigan Carnegie Mellon, a few of the um, good schools, when they talk about the type of student that they're looking for, um, the majority of them say they want somebody well-rounded and they want somebody who has um, varied interests and interests outside of the arts. How true is that for the PUB <laughs> program? Um, here's the thing. That's, I mean, if you look at a school like Carnegie, um, A, like Wendy said, they're not really looking at your grades, they're not really looking at that application that you sent in, they're looking at your audition. I mean, you gotta send the application in, you gotta, you gotta do all of that, but um, the only way that that would come up in a situation like with Carnegie is if they were to ask you some questions about what you do outside of school and, and so on and so forth. I was not asked any questions like that, but I was asked some questions. So uh, a lot of schools, I, I think, you know, the schools that are, you know, and actually I never thought about it this way, but and it's been 10 years that we've been having these talks, but um, now that I think about it, the schools that I ended up getting accepted to were the ones that talked to me a little bit um, and asked me whether it was a formal interview like with uh, like with um, CalArts, or whether it was just at Carnegie, it was just in passing, a couple questions, um, uh, presidential scholars came up in the conversation, which I'm sure probably helped a little bit, um, but uh, it's, I don't know that there's any way with a school like that that's not really digging into, you know, yeah. your like, essays or anything like that that you have to write, I don't know how much that comes into play, but there are other schools that, that uh, like a BA program is really gonna be looking hard at You're that still gonna stuff. have an activity sheet. Well, know? she has activity sheets, yeah. um, and she has lots of different interests, but they're not outside the arts. Everything she's interested in is art-related. Arts-related. Art-related. Whether it's traveling and, you know, she loves architecture, she okay, loves Okay, but it's still loves... showing that she does more than just perform. Yeah, yeah. I think that's right. what they mean. That's yeah. really what I think, I think that's they're what looking they mean. It's just yeah. something outside of right. singing and acting. That's exactly. Really nice. But one thing I think is really important to mention, and we did mention this in the last thing, is you've got to understand that by the time you get to where they're making a decision, this isn't about talent anymore. Yeah. They're taking headshots, they're sitting around a big table, they're putting everybody's headshots up there and they're creating an ensemble. Yeah. And you could be the most talented person on that thing, but if you are, like we said, one of three redheads and they're just looking for a redhead and a blonde and da 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 and they're, they're thinking about their season, you know, for the next few years and they're building that ensemble, you know, it, it, at that point it's not about it's not about your talent. Your talent got you to that point on the table. It got you there. Yeah, you got on the, the table. Numbers are not enough but the numbers that. are numbers, and that's all they are. Yeah. And so that's why you got to throw out a big net, yeah. because hopefully you're going to end up on that table in several schools, and just by chance they're going to say, hey, we will like this person. And that's also why you maybe want to throw a few BA programs in there, so that if you don't get a BFA program, you at least you have a theater program within a BA framework that you didn't have to audition for, that you got in on the basis of your academics. So another question, if um, a student doesn't get into the top schools, let's say, um, would you suggest that you went to one of their safe schools and then hope for transfer, or would you suggest to just take that year to whatever, get some experience, I would say, experience and then apply again the following year. Me personally, I, I would say you go into the school you got into and then you build some credits and then you try transferring. So you to transfer them to... Just remember, with the BFA program, when you transfer, you start over. Yep. You're back to That's freshman true. year. That's true. You start from we the know the yeah. student who went to Cal State yeah. Fulton, he yeah. right. three times for Otterbein, he didn't get in until Otterbein, the third time he was already a junior and started back as a freshman in five. And that was, I don't know if I ever told you that, same thing at, at Carnegie. We had a student who would have been yeah. going into his junior year, but he transferred into Carnegie, started with us so as a freshman. Yep. So because the program is so dense. So then in that case, in that it would be better case. to perhaps just take the year, yeah. get some experience, maybe work or, you know. Some and people do a gap year. The one thing about a gap year is 
it's a, it's a personality thing. Some kids take a gap year and then it's like, oh, I don't want to go back. Yeah. Right? That happens. All that happens. That's a lot. That happens. That's a lot. But there are some that kids who will say, I'm going to take a gap year and I'm going to work with the Peace Corps and I'm going to go to Africa right. for a year. I'm going to do something very specific and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do it. Yeah, they're, they're still living under your roof, so I would get into an, a contractual agreement <laughs> with them. Um, if you're not going to go to school, then this is what's <laughs> going to happen. Yeah. What would you recommend keeping them busy as far as keeping their talents up or meeting people as, as such in the mix of all that, like clubs or like other, like, I guess, places around the colleges perhaps to offer things or might present opportunities? You mean as far as staying involved in theater? Um, yeah, what they love while they're still studying uh, their brains off. The first thing is, as I tell yeah. people, get out there and audition like everybody yeah. else does. I mean, you, you've you been here, you've been at OSHA, your skill set is higher than if you just, you know, came out. You, can't, you come through a conservatory program. So take more classes, right? Go into LA, take some classes. Take you some know, acting classes, take some improv. Take improv, take, get, get a keep voice your coach. Feet, take voice classes, do it all. Maybe you've never done voiceover, but have an interest in it. Take a voiceover class. You might want to think about directing or writing. Take those classes, because Jackson will tell you, he, you know, at Carnegie, he was, you know, writing became a very important thing to him. And I didn't know that was going to happen. And he didn't know that was going to happen. So the thing is, is, like we have integrated arts here. Those kids are trying all different kinds of things, right? They get exposed to a lot, but in music and theater, that's where you are. Start thinking out of the box. Start thinking about, if you're going to take a gap year, what can you do? Go to auditions. Go to audition for Musical Theater West. Go to yeah, audition right. for a 3D. Go to audition for the Chance Theater. Um, get the, Because auditioning is your job. Getting the, the gig is icing on the cake. But your job is auditioning. And there is, on the subject of that, because I know this comes up a lot, people say, well, I don't have the money to you know, spend on a bunch of classes, and college is going to be expensive. And I, I think about that too, you know, I want to always keep my skills sharp and I'm not always in a show, you know, when I'm not in a show, I want to keep myself fresh. Um, and I don't have, my, I, I'm in debt up to my, past my brain into space um, on, uh, on, with Carnegie. So I can't spend more money on, on the educational side of things. I have to be recouping those costs by working. And the way, we're all creative, you know, we're all performers, that we're gonna do this. And I truthfully believe there's always a creative way to get that training and keep yourself sharp without having to spend money on classes. For me, I started writing theatrically, and so when I am writing in my free time, when I am developing a new play, which I don't have to pay anyone to do, I can think about a character's objectives and what my character's arcs are and what type of uh, what type of uh, transitions these characters have through the, have the course of the play. And that helps keep me sharp. I have a friend who is a dancer who can't spend money on dance classes, so she has gotten together with a group of friends that are all in the same boat, they can't afford a dance class, but they're all good dancers, and they have a self-made class where they rotate who's the choreographer that week. So they go for free, and all someone has to do is come up with one routine to teach every however many weeks is however many kids are in the class, and then... Uh, interestingly enough, a couple Wednesdays ago, I joined a, a, like an acting co-op with some, another student, a guy who graduated from here, close to Chris Aguilar. And I go on Wednesday nights at 8.30, with a small group of people, and we act. And I do stuff that I would have never thought I would do, ever. But I'm having so much fun, okay? I'm taking a tap class on there. I promise, this year, I was going to do stuff for myself. I take a tap class on Thursday nights with Ray Lamone. 10 bucks it cost me, $10, right? Okay, you can. There's things you can do to keep your skill sharp. Right, you don't have to spend the like, $175 spend for a vocal yeah. session. You don't, you don't have to. One yeah. last quick question. Yeah. Uh, as you were saying, they might be looking for that specific type of ethnicity or you know visual look. Are you know with, with film, you know when they audition in like in LA, you're able to put your stuff out there for something and they accept you and say, hey, yeah, we'd like to have you come in. Is that the same case with theater, or is it completely the opposite? With the pre-screens, that's the only equivalent that there is that some schools will now do this pre-screen, which I can't speak to because those were not in place when I when I auditioned. Um, but that is sort of their way of. You know, weeding certain things out that they may not. Want. Figure saves some But are you talking time, about right? for yeah. like professional theater? I mean, you just go to auditions and you know, you're either you get a call back or you don't, right? Right. You know, you get a call back or you don't. And and the thing, 
that's really, really important, is if you're looking at your college auditions like a callback, okay, really, it's really the same, okay? You, there are things that are really, really important, and I, and I, and I know Jackson knows this as well. These colleges are looking for you, you, who you are, right? Be, be honest and true. This is the thing. They're looking for people who are comfortable in their bodies. And one thing I see a lot at OSHA is a lot of stiff bodies. I see a lot of that, okay? That is, the, if there's anything that you can do to separate yourself is to have no fear. Be really comfortable in your body. Pick material that really you can relate to that means something to you. Except Jackson says there should be one that scares you a little bit. One of your right? pieces should be polar opposite of you. The other one should be very much. You know, yourself. one that's that you know you're going to approach and say, "Whoa, can I do this?" Um, but be yourself. Walk into the room and be you. You are special. Each one of you in this room are special, and they don't need another somebody else, right? So bring yourself to the table. It is very true. It's, it's a, a unique point to make, but it's one I absolutely agree with. Regardless of what you've done in high school, or if you're this person's favorite student or least favorite student, or if you've gotten a lead or not gotten any leads at all, you've got to walk into that room believing that you're special. Not with an ego. Not yes, all full no of hot air and all pumped up and I'm the best person on the face of the planet. But you got to be able to appreciate you. And if, if you can't yet, that's, I would work on that because that's important. It's not, I'm going to do what I do and if they love me, they love me. If they don't, they don't. It's, I'm going to do what I do because I love this. And if they love me, that's great. If they don't, I still love me. And I'm still into what I do. And I'm going to keep going. Very important. They can sense that. They can smell that. They can smell it out. Uh, so, yes, very good point. The question, the pre-screening process, is that done by admissions or by the department, or by the theater department? Who's looking at that? Theater Who's department. looking at it? The theater department. Okay, okay. so admissions has no... No, no. No, no. 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 it's strictly to find out whether they're interested in seeing you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we have to let you guys go because you have to go to the next one, but if you want to stay, you can stay. Just the more people's going to come in. And, uh, you know, if you have more questions, contact us. Thank you. 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 Thank you.